Hi, and welcome back. This is Patty Cook here. Uh, today, what we're going to do is continue on with the Communication 101 series. If you're not familiar with the Communication 101 series that I've been talking about, different uh, aspects of building up communication, uh, communication skills. And uh, uh, then you'll, I invite you to come to my blog and read the previous ones. Um, the reason why I decided to focus in on communication skills is essential, right? It's essential to building relationships, and the key to good scales, sales is communication, yeah, excellent communication. And by, by applying just a few tips and tricks and honing in on those, you can, you can build up rapport with people. It becomes natural for you to build up a, a, a rapport and to hone in on the different personality types and uh, and so on. Now, through video marketing or online marketing, it is a little bit more difficult, but the way around that would be in um, using visual aids and, and in our written words. So today, I want to talk about that a little bit and how we can use uh, NLP. I, I, I'm very interested in NLP and I've studied it quite a bit over the years and I've just started getting back into focusing in on NLP um, practices and how to use them uh, you know basically to get what you want it's not only a personal uh, a personal thing to help you with your own personal growth but also how you can interact with other people so in a previous post I talked about body language so when you as a marketer or a salesperson, you're when you first approach a potential client or a customer, um, when you're face to face with them, you'll get a you'll get somewhat of an idea of what their body language is telling you because there's some there's some basic telltale signs. Now, most people when they're approaching a salesperson, they're they've got their back up a little bit anyway because they feel that oh you know they're going to try to sell me something I don't want um, we'll, we'll talk about objections a little bit too but bottom line is everybody has their preferred language so once you get a feel for the body language aspect of course you can't do that through video so glean from this and use it in particular in whatever particular area you're going to focus on your marketing um, your marketing campaign on so, but all of these can be applied to online marketing as well as offline. And that's key because I believe that that's the perfect circle. Okay. Um, so back to everybody, they have the preferred language. So you have your visual uh, people. They, they need to see, uh, need to see. They need to, or they use words such as see, uh, look, picture this. Um, and other colorful and illustrative words. So the more detail that they get in as they're speaking, then you know that they're pretty much a visual. Now the auditory type individual um, likes to hear. They're, everything's about the auditory. <coughs> Excuse me. And, you know, they'll use words such as listen and hear, sounds like. Or they rephrase a sentence, uh, you know, can you hear what I'm saying? Are you listening? Right, this sort of thing. And then, of course, we have the kinesthetic um, phrases. And uh, while it's difficult to market to a kinesthetic individual in the digital world, but there are some tips and tricks. So, so of course, the kinesthetic, for those that aren't aware, they're the touchy-feely type people. And when you focus on... The, the words that they're saying, they'll say things like feel, um, to get a feel for this, or I resonate with what you're saying. You know, there's a, there's, there's, um, there's a lot of the physical aspect to that. So when you're interacting with a potential client or even with family and friends, uh, I mean, this works for, for, you know, for all aspects of communication and relationship building. But to listen to the words that people are using in conversation. So if they're focusing on visual words, you know, um, say more auditory words, or do you get the feeling that they may, may also be kinesthetic? Because, 
you know, people can have a combination. They can be a visual and a touchy-feely. I'm a visual and a touchy-feely. My hands fly all over, all over the place when I talk. And when I, when I interact with people, I tend to touch them lightly sometimes. Um, but I've got a feel for who wants to be touched and who doesn't. But I'll tell you, talk about an attraction factor when somebody, when somebody makes it quite well known to me that they don't like to be touched. That is, that makes me want to touch them all that much more. But of course, uh, you don't want to offend them. So you have to give them their space there. So for us, you know, so on the one-on-one, -on -one, say for instance, you do have a kinesthetic, let them touch your product. Let them feel the samples that you have. And, um, you know, um, auditories, you know, be aware of the words that you are saying because the words are what they're listening to. And of course, um, you know, they'll hear the quality of your voice, the quality of the comments that you're making and the actions. So um, in the NLP world, the, in the sales world, they have what they call a meta model. And this is, um, this is a preferred method to use. Um, and they, many will say it's an absolute must when it comes for, when it comes to, um, you know, wanting to quicken the sale or cut to the chase. And, um, you know, when, when you're asked questions or, you know, that uh, tend to just keep going on or, or any anticipated objection. And we marketers are very familiar with objection. Uh, we get a lot of that. But obviously, we love what we do because we continue to we continue to do it. So, um, so the meta model it involves using phrases such as "What exactly do you mean?" and "How exactly?" So, by using the tools of the meta model, you'll be in a position to identify any missing information that your customer may have deleted from the question or the clarifying aspect of your conversation. And any content that is distorted or could be interpreted incorrectly can then be corrected. So the meta model, um, it helps you drill down to the information that you need in order to respond accurately and with speed to questions. So, you know, in any of the objections uh, or levels of interest. So. Of course, this, this applies more to the one-on-one -on -one because we can't control um, what our online potential customers um, are going to do. They could just X out your, off your site, off your page, right? So it's very important. We have to work a little bit harder at using our audio, visual, and kinetic words and provide enough stimulation on our site to keep them there. And so part of this meta model too, um, in continuing on with this, um, it's in a way, it, 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 it includes an aspect called away from and towards. So you'll build, your customer or client will either tell you what they do want, which is a towards uh, NLP, or what they don't want, which is an away from. So this is an excellent clue um, as to how that how they process information, right? Half glass full, half empty sort of thing. So if they are towards, for example, focused on what they want, so then what you would do is you, you know, explain uh, your benefits in terms of what they'll get. So, but if they are an away from, um, then geared, then they're geared to what they don't want. Then you could tell them what they won't have to do, or what they won't have, or you can use a mixture of the two. So just to recap that again, I want to go over my notes here. Um, away from and towards, your customer will either tell you what they do want, which is a towards feature, or what they don't want, which is away from. So um, if, if they're a towards person, then you want to focus on what they, on what they want. You, then if, they, if they're, you can almost meet that type of a person right away when it's on a face-to-face. -face. Then that's when you jump in and explain the benefits in term, terms of what they'll get. If they are in a way from, 
geared to what they don't want, those are generally the hard sellers. Um, then you, you need to tell them what they won't have to do or what they won't have or won't get. Or you can use a little mixture of the two. So and by owning your product, they won't have to worry about X, Y, or whatever. So you want to tell them the benefits of what they will get. And, and if you're going to use a little bit of a mixture, if they tend to be more of an away person, those are the ones that are a little harder to sell. So then that's when you would mix that up a bit. And, uh, you know, by owning this product, you won't, you won't have to do this. You won't have to stay up late at night. You won't have to do this and this and this. Um, and you won't have to worry about this, this, and this. But you will be able to free your time, blah, 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 you know. So um, a lot of... Um, salespeople are and, and marketers are getting more interested in using NLP and for those who are, are still not familiar with it it's NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming and I actually have a couple of blog posts on um, describing NLP but as I said um, you know a lot of marketers and salespeople are using NLP more frequently um, because of the effects that it has. Not only that, like as I said earlier, the personal growth that you get from it too. So by paying attention to the small signals and, you know, from your customer, or from your family or friends, uh, you can respond with a more targeted um, pitch for customers or solution if you're having an interaction with a loved one and or just with a client you want, you want them to buy your product. So thank you, and if you're interested in any of the Communication 101 series that I've posted already, please go to my site at um, empowernetwork.com forward slash patio, P-A-T-E-H-O. You'll see the link below. So thank you for stopping by, and have a great day. Make it count.